Today, today, the 27th of September 2021, is the 67th birthday of God's servant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our own father, Bishop David Olani Oyedepo. We join our hearts. Can we please rise up and sing him the beautiful song? Happy birthday to you, Daddy. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you for that good singing. You should go for recording and to say around the world, be blessed. Be blessed. The principal task of priesthood is proclamation of blessings. May the blessings be proclaimed on each one of us in this place find Real life fulfillment yeah. in our lives. Yeah. May the prophetic blessings proclaimed yesterday keep speaking louder by the day in your life. Yeah. You never run out of favor anymore. Yeah. You never run a favor dry life anymore. Yeah. You shall keep on flourishing like the palm tree. Yeah. And scaling new heights like the said in Lebanon. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Now lift up your two hands and ask God to speak to you today by his word. For the moment that we have. And thank you Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. He opened my ears morning by morning. He opened my ears to hear as he learned. The Lord has opened my ears and I was not rebellious. Grace to line up with the things he makes us to hear. Receive it right now. And may your full turnaround package ordained for the year be fully delivered before Shiloh 2021. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Amen. Welcome again to 2021, your year of supernatural turn around. And so shall it be. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. <laughs> Biblical prophecy indicates that there shall be the falling away of many in the last days. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. There shall be the falling away of many in the last days. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin shall be revealed, Satan, the son of perdition. Amen. So it's, it's a prophecy of scriptures. There shall be a falling away of many. You shall not be among them. Amen. Now, this is why we all need grace for continuity in our work with God. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. The Bible says, Be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, Always abandon the works of the Lord for as much as 
they know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be ye steadfast. But many made it to the end in Bible days, and as we follow their steps, we are sure to make it also. Hebrews 6, 12. Don't be slothful. That is what they did to make it. But followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 6, 12. Don't be slothful. Wake up. Lift up your hands and hang down. Take responsibility. You want to make it to the end the way they made it? Find out what they did and do the same thing. Praise God. And then you make it. Find out what they did and do the same thing. Nothing of value is ever free. You want to make heaven? It's at a cost. You want to make the most of your adventure on earth? It's at a cost. And so, our uh, exhortation line for the week is captioned, engaging the grace for continuity in stewardship. Engaging the grace for continuity in stewardship. We can have this for our text, Acts 26 and verse 22. By the help, he said, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. <laughs> having obtained help, it is impossible to continue without help from above. I continue to this day witnessing both to small and great, say no other things than those things with the prophets and Moses did say should come. Having obtained help of God. How many need that help this morning? We all need it. No one can make it to the end without the help from above. We all need it. We all need help from above to keep rolling for Jesus like a roller coaster. We all need help from above to keep going. Now, watch. Abraham, the servant of God, served him for 100 years. He was called at 75. And then, Genesis 25 and verse 8, he went up to heaven at 175. 100 years time, and the Bible calls him Abraham, my servant. He served him to the end. How do I know? Genesis 24, verse 1, Abraham was old and sick in age, and God had blessed Abraham in all things. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless. Thou shalt serve, and the Lord shall bless. So Abraham served to the end. Who is a servant? Who shall you yourself to obey? The servants here whom you obey. Abraham was a prompt, obedient servant of God. Get thee out of thy country, on the spot he moved. Circumcise the firstborn, all the male born in your house. As soon as God was done speaking with him, as if he had no agenda, he went into it. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, and bring him to the altar for a sacrifice. Early in the morning, he rose up. Yet, he was a business emperor. He counsels everything to obey God. Abraham was a servant of God indeed. And if you be Abraham's seed, then you do the works of Abraham. Serving the interests of another is what makes you a servant. And Abraham was all out serving God's interest by obeying his commandment promptly, delightsomely, without requiring coercion, no pressure from anywhere. That's how Abraham was made. He made it through a period of a hundred years. I don't know how many years you have served him. You see, now you have a long way to go. I have a long way to go. Now, Joseph also made it to the end, maintaining the fear of God from the age of 17 as a, as a slave, got to the prison, and from there to the palace, at the age of 30, departed, at, departed the world at 110, prophesying. Man, prophesying. <laughs> I will surely visit you, he said. 
He said, God said, I will surely visit you and bring you out of this land. He was on key with God to the end. He was on key with God to the end. Now, Genesis 50 and verse 24. This is Joseph speaking. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. That's the end of his life. And God will surely visit you. He spoke to me that he will visit you. He was on key. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? He was a teenager. God was at the center of his life. But I fear God. Mm. And that continued <laughs> to the prison and then to the palace. Joseph was in charge in Egypt for 80 years. That position did not defy him. He was a servant of servants. Somebody's blessed here. Because somebody made it 93 years from the age of 17 to 110. Somebody has made it 100 years in the person of Abraham. You and I will make it too. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Make your amen strong in faith. Amen. But Solomon crashed after 20 years of equality work with God. And Solomon loved the Lord. It was God's darling for 20 years. After 20 years, he derailed. First Kings, chapter 9, verse 10. He just became loose. And he lost his place of favor with God. 20 years was gone. And King Solomon just shifted his love for God to the love of many women. And the glory departed. Vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. And God is adversary against him. What? He called him Solomon, the son of peace. He troubled his peace when it's connected. You will not be troubled. Amen. There's a particular adversity that God raised against Solomon. He was an adversary to Solomon until the day of his death. He was his enemy till they put him in the grave. That's why we need grace. He truly loved God. God was at the center of his life. But that lasted only for 20 years. You know what? He finished building the house of God and so the king's house. And what more am I to do? I'm free. I'm free. He just got free for the devil to pick on. The devil said, well, I'm looking for those who are free. So he got hold of him. You have all the money in the world, marry as many as you can. Nobody can question you. You are the KBAC of this place. And it just went off. You will not go off. Amen. That's why we need grace for continuity. Everybody needs grace for continuity. Everybody needs grace for continuity. You and I, we always need grace for continuity. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. But I labor my burden, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Yet not I, but the, but the grace of God that was with me. So it's important for us to see the place of grace. And how do we get at that grace? Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So when even wind blows across, you can stand fast against the storms. Grace and peace multiplied by knowledge. 
keep learning more and more on how to remain steadfast in your work with God. The combination of the two will make you a candidate for grace. I must say here today, we are not where we are by any strength or skill. I'm not on my feet today by any strength or skill, but the grace of God. The, have you ever missed it? Severally. But he gets me back on my feet. He corrects me. I've said things that he told me was not correct. And would tell me when it had been announced and then I would say, oh yeah, that's okay. We can be wrong, that's why we have a master. And Jesus is the master. He has the right to correct at any point. You can't challenge him. Grace is a guarantee for every glorious destiny in the kingdom. Grace is the only guarantee for every glorious destiny in the kingdom. I had some five-fold visitations in my life. They happened within two years, 1976 and 1977. The first one was access to the voice of God. It came by grace. I wasn't asking for it. I was just studying. And then suddenly I saw the person of the Holy Spirit. And I put that to test the same day. And I had them guiding my steps, step by step, to an unknown place and got me to the same place. 76, I encountered Matthew 6, 33. And I called it the jackpot of life. I now found the master key of profitable living. 77, your future is in my plan, not in your plan. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Your future is in my plan and not in your plan. For I know my plans for you, says the Lord, the plans of welfare and not of evil. Revised standard version. To give you a future and a hope. So I began to pan for his plan. And what I'm doing today is not my plan, far from my thought. I just found myself in his plan because he already taught me that your future is in my plan and not in your plan. Awesome God. He hasn't changed. He's ever on the throne. 77, I heard him say to me, I've taught your tongue with the coal of fire and from henceforth, as you say it, you see it. Upon my study of the book of Ezekiel, I had a touch of fire on my tongue. And that becomes what we call today prophetic declarations. You declare it, God confirms it, because of the grace encountered from the world. Somebody's told is changing. If that is your, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. That is your, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. And then... The harder you follow me, the higher you fly. 77. My soul followed hard after thee, O God, and thy right hand upholds me. He said, my son, the harder you follow me, the higher you fly. Every encounter with the world releases grace from heaven because grace and peace multiplies by knowledge. You want continuity in your stewardship? Demand for grace on the altar of prayer and by searching through scriptures. It reinforces your place in God. You never suffer disgrace in your life. Your work with God will be consistent, fruitful, and impactful. Stand to your feet. <coughs> Amen. Abraham succeeded serving God 100 years. Joseph succeeded serving God 93 years. I must make it. So help me, Jesus.
Go ahead and lift up your two hands and pray that prayer over your life. You must make it. <laughs> Those patriarchs made it in the age of sin, when sin was raining. Now, grace has come, I must make it. Grace has come, I must make it. I receive few temptation of returning back from following you and serving you. I must make it. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Well, but to my surprise, my passion for God has not dropped one bit in 45 years that I encountered Matthew 6, 44, 43. Now, I proclaim that blessing of continuity by grace upon everyone's life. No one here will ever tell the story when I used to serve God. You never tell the story when you used to serve God. You will serve him profitably to the end. Amen. You will not be listed among them that turn away. Amen. Jesus will remain the center of your life. Amen. And every other thing that others are dying to get, he will begin to add to you by favor. Amen. Nothing flies like favor. So expect to keep scaling new heights by the day. Amen. As you keep serving God in truth and verity, you keep scaling new heights in your life. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. The week is declared a week of testimonies. Yeah. Change of level order of testimonies. Yeah. Promo consistency in your still worship. Yeah. You never give up. Yeah. You never lie low. Yeah. You keep scaling new heights. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, every Every grace upon this commission that has given us this noiseless breakthrough dimension of impact, I release the same grace upon your life. We have not had to struggle over anything in 40 years. Now, your days of struggles are finally over. Working in obedience commits God's integrity to confirm his word in your life. Now, you will never struggle to see great things happen in your life anymore. May obedience become your new watchword, and so shall it be. Be blessed of the Lord. Everyone here is blessed today with the grace of a good old age. Many here will be testifying at 100. As Jesus tarries, some people are here, they will hit 120. In strength, in health, in vitality, yeah. in spirituality, yeah. prophesying to the day you give up the ghost, yeah. proclaiming blessings on your seed after you, yeah. and so shall it be. Yeah. Lift up those two hands, give God thanks, give him glory, give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name.